This is a short video on penetrating neck trauma. I'll be discussing the etiology, the pathophysiology, and the manifestations of neck trauma from a penetrating object. As in all of these videos, the color coding is listed on the top right, and I'll be clearing all of the boxes and repopulating the flowchart one by one. Let's go ahead and get started. If you've already seen the penetrating chest and abdominal trauma videos, then this will look familiar in the beginning. You can have penetration injury from a stab wound or from a gunshot wound. From a stab wound, you have the, thrust, the thrusting action of a pointed object, like a knife or a broken bottle. This then lacerates the tissue and tears the tissue along the path of the object. And the depth of injury here is usually greater than the width of the injury. In a gunshot wound, the tissue is lacerated and crushed along the path of the bullet. The severity of injury here is related to the kinetic energy of the bullet. So if you remember from high school or college physics, kinetic energy can be summarized as one half mv squared, where m is mass, like the weight of the bullet in this case, and v is velocity, or the speed of the bullet in this case. Both of these factors, the weight and the velocity of the kinetic object, the ballistic missile, can uh, help you compute how much energy, how much damage is going into the gunshot wound. In a gunshot wound, the tissue is displaced forward and radially. This causes cavitation and pressure injury of nearby structures. And dense organs, like liver and bone, will absorb more kinetic energy and then be damaged more than less dense organs, like skin or fat tissue. In any case, if you have a stab or a gunshot wound to the neck, you'll have penetrating neck trauma. And there are a bunch of manifestations of this that we'll see in just a second. Not sure why that one popped up, but let's ignore it for now. So the first two we're going to talk about are tracheobronchial injury, essentially an injury to your windpipe, and esophageal injury, of course your food pipe that goes down to your stomach. So these run along each other, they're very close to each other in the neck. The tracheobronchial injury is slightly in front. You have your windpipe first and then your esophageal injury is in the back, but they often get injured together. In more severe cases, when you have injury to your windpipe or to your esophagus, you'll have airway compromise, you'll have wound bubbling, and you'll have extensive subcutaneous emphysema, as well as hoarseness and stridor of voice. These are considered hard signs. These are very um, urgent. These require urgent surgical intervention, and you often bypass imaging when going to surgery. In less severe cases, you can have hemoptysis, hematemesis, so um, blood in your coughing, blood in your vomit. You can have dysphonia, where your voice is abnormal. You can have mild subcutaneous emphysema and dysphagia. These are considered soft signs. They're still concerning, but they require a CTA before, um, for, for further evaluation before surgery. So do your imaging first in this case, and in this case, go straight to surgery. The hard signs and the soft signs are also evident in vascular injury. Now there's a lot of blood vessels that go through your neck. The big ones are the carotid artery, the vertebral artery, both of which supply blood to the brain, and the jugular vein, which brings blood back <clears throat> down from the brain. So the hard signs of vascular injury include hemorrhagic shock. These are pretty big vessels and you can bleed out and end up with hypotension and tachycardia. You can also notice pulsatile bleeding on exam, an expanding hematoma, a carotid brui, a unilateral pulse deficit is very concerning, and signs of stroke, of course, like limb weakness or aphasia or altered mental status would all be very confusing, uh, very concerning after penetrating neck trauma. The soft signs here are minor bleeding, a non-expanding hematoma, and a proximity wound, which is essentially when you see the wound that's further away from the vasculature, further away from the carotid artery, vertebral artery, and jugular vein. Next, let's look at cranial nerve injury. Now, the big cranial nerve that goes through the neck is the vagus nerve, and one of the branches of the vagus nerve is the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So let's talk about what these things do and what damage to these nerves might manifest. So first, the vagus nerve, if damaged, can cause dysphagia and aspiration. So difficulty swallowing, and when you have difficulty swallowing, remember your windpipe is right next to your esophagus, so that can lead to aspiration, possibly leading to a pneumonia. In addition, the vagus nerves helps with your stomach motility. So if you have damage to your vagus nerve, you can have gastroparesis. This might lead to postprandial fullness and bloating. So after a meal, your stomach isn't pushing food forward, it's not doing its normal uh, peristalsis, so that can lead to bloating after meals. Your vagus nerve is also responsible for moving part of your soft palate, and if you have vagus nerve injury, you can have flaccid paralysis of your soft palate, which can lead to a nasal sounding speech. Now the recurrent laryngeal nerve can also be damaged, and that's part of the vagus nerve. Remember, it's a branch of the vagus nerve. If one side of the 
recurrent laryngeal nerve, remember there's two, one on each side. If one of them gets damaged, you can have dysphonia, an abnormal voice, or hoarseness. If both sides get damaged, you could lose your voice completely. You can have aphonia and also inspiratory strider. Lastly, another big injury that can happen from neck trauma is pneumothorax. We also talked about this one in the penetrating chest trauma video, but it's relevant here. Remember your lungs go all the way up into your shoulders, <clears throat> and it's possible that perhaps a downward facing penetrating neck wound can reach the lungs and pop them. So pneumothorax is where air enters the pleural cavity, um, in this case from trauma, usually from lung damage, and this leads to lung collapse. Remember that the pleural space is usually a negative pressure space that helps your lungs expand with your chest wall during inspiration. So if you pierce the lungs or break this pleural cavity, you'll have lung collapse, a pneumothorax. This can of course be painful, so you'll have chest pain. You'll also have difficulty breathing, respiratory distress, dyspnea. You can have hypoxia on your vital signs, and you can have decreased or absent breath sounds, especially on the side of the pneumothorax. In severe cases, this can lead to a tension pneumothorax. This is when you have progressively increasing pressure within the chest. A tension pneumothorax happens when there's a one-way valve into your pleural cavity. So as you take a breath in, you're putting more and more air into that pleural cavity, and the pressure is progressively going to increase within the chest. This can be pretty severe, because if that pressure gets really, really high in your chest, you're gonna block blood returning to your heart. So you can notice distended neck veins. Your heart's not able to expand like it used to because you have this really, really high pressure in your chest and that'll manifest in your neck veins. They'll be distended. You might also notice tracheal deviation on exam and you can see tracheal deviation on a chest x-ray as well. If this pressure gets really, really high and if the blood is really, really blocked from getting back into your heart, this can lead to obstructive shock as well in very severe cases. This has been a video on penetrating neck trauma. I hope it was helpful and thank you for listening.